Hello, I'm here today with Saints in Armor by GMT Games. It is the sixth game in the Musket and Pike series. Um, the Musket and Pike series covers uh, a lot of battles in the 17th century, in the Pike and Shot era. This particular installment, though, Saints in Armor, covers the early parts of the Thirty Years' War. Um, mostly battles featuring the Count of Tilly. Um, this particular one I am doing today is the Battle of White Mountain uh, during the Bohemian Revolt. Uh, during the early parts of the Bohemian Revolt, uh, fortunes kind of swung back and forth, but now the Empire is sending troops in, uh, allied with the Catholic League, along with a lot of funding from Spain, some elite Polish cavalry. So uh, the uh, Count of Tilly was able to maneuver around uh, the Protestant forces, trying to make a drive right on the capital, Prague, uh, right at the heart of uh, the Bohemians. So the Protestants have established a strong defensive position outside uh, the town of Prague, up in the mountains. Uh, it's called White Mountain, actually. Um, I'll go into a little more detail now uh, on the Protestant side. First of all, over here on the left wing, we have uh, Wing Commander Thurn uh, leading some uh, Moravian and uh, Bohemian forces. Uh, there is a heavy field gun in an emplacement right here and uh, guarded by some commanded muskets, uh, musketeers, and uh, yeah, some light cavalry, uh, some heavy cavalry. Uh, now let's go over to the Protestant center. Uh, their wing commander, Hohenloy. Uh, he starts on his Finnish side. Actually, all the Protestant leaders start on their finished side in this scenario, meaning they cannot activate in the first turn. And this is just to simulate how the Protestant leadership was slow uh, to react to the attack. Um, they have some heavy uh, infantry, some heavy cavalry, some light cavalry. Uh, another light uh, four to eight pounder gun up in a emplacement. And... Let's go over here to the right wing, Wing Commander Schlick, and he has a heavy gun. This is a extremely heavy gun, uh, kind of a commanding position looking over the uh, Catholic's position. It has a uh, fortification around it. And if you actually notice, over here is Chateau Stern. Um, it was, I believe, a hunting lodge used by, like, Bohemian royalty. It has a uh, wall around it here, and there's some cliff sides over there. And uh, these units here are garrison units, but they are part of the right wing. However, they have this little white line around their name, and that means they do not have to follow the orders for that wing and they don't have to remain in communication as long as they stay within the uh, boundaries of the chateau. Uh, there's a victory point hex here uh, for the Catholic forces if they are able to occupy with good order heavy infantry units. Uh, now let's swing back here adding some depth to the line is uh, some Transylvanian cavalry, uh, light cavalry. Uh, they are, unfortunately, however, not able to activate initially. In fact, at the end of each turn during the marker removal phase, you roll on this table, and there's a possibility, possibility of them leaving the battlefield completely or remaining inactive, or they can commit to the battle, and then you can use their forces as normal and activate the wing as normal. Historically, uh, I believe the Transylvanians pulled out and kind of left, uh, <laughs> didn't have any effect on the battle, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Now, um, going down the hill here, or the mountain, we have the Catholic side. Uh, we'll start with the Imperial forces, that's over here. We have the Imperial First Echelon here. 
led by Maximilian, the Prince of Liechtenstein. Um, he has some light, uh, light cavalry, some heavy cavalry. And then we have the army commander, Bukoy. And then second echelon, with the second echelon wing commander, Tiffenbach. Uh, interestingly enough, though, uh, Bukoy can only activate when the first or second echelon, imperial echelons, activate. He cannot activate during the Catholic League uh, wing activation. And that's just because, even though they're on the same side, there is two separate... Uh, separate command structures there. Now this cannon here uh, represents four uh, heavy guns that were lent to him by uh, Tilly from the Catholic League. Uh, they had 12 heavy cannons that were referred to as the 12 apostles. Um, he uh, kept eight and lent four of them to Bakoy. So they activate along with the fourth uh, First echelon, I mean, even though it's colored uh, like the Catholic League uh, forces. Okay, over here we have some of that elite uh, Polish cavalry. And then let's swing over to the Catholic League forces. We have their remaining eight guns uh, here. Uh, some commanded muskets, light infantry filling up the, the gap as, gaps as skirmishers. And then we have the League Wing Commander, Tilly, uh, Johann Cercles. Um, definitely a very great commander. Uh, he definitely won the day <laughs> in this particular engagement. And then over here, the Army Commander for the uh, Catholic League forces is Maximilian I uh, of Bavaria, Duke of Bavaria. He... Uh, Interestingly enough, even though the country was very poor, he was very uh, wise financially, and he became one of the richest men in Europe, <laughs> interestingly enough. Um, and he can only activate when the Catholic League wing activates. He cannot activate when the Imperial wing activates, too. Uh, then back here we have Wittenberg. Uh, he was just guarding the uh, baggage train <laughs> for the Catholic League forces, so... Uh, let's pull it back out here and give kind of an overview. This uh, lot of elevation changes. This is kind of the low valley, and they're working up uh, to the hill. Uh, this road here leads to Prague, the capital. And there's extra victory point hexes in some of these places for the Catholic uh, forces to occupy. And actually, this particular battle, it is nearly impossible for the Protestant forces to win because historically, this was a uh, definitely a blowout. Uh, it, in fact, it ended the Bohemian <laughs> Rebellion. <laughs> so uh, there's really no hope of me winning. I will be playing the Protestant side, but I will just see uh, you know how good of a job I can do. Maybe uh, do a little bit better than <laughs> historically, but there is just inferior equipment even though i have the superior position there's inferior leadership and it's just going to be a tough uh, tough fight interestingly enough too this is a feature i like that got added with saints in armor each battle has its own little mini battle mat that keeps track of the terrain effect charts for that particular battle and some of the special rules, because each scenario has its own rules. And this way you don't have to page through the book. It's a little more easy to have it right there. And you have your unit orders right there. Um, the Catholic first and second echelon starts under charge orders. And the left wing starts under uh, make ready orders. Uh, on the Protestant side, uh, everybody starts under receive charge orders. And as I said before, you cannot activate... Uh, during the first turn, you can only react. So we will see how this goes. I'm gonna stop it here and then uh, take the first turn and see how things look uh, after that. And we'll uh, continue in part two.